Welcome to the first ever reaction video here on the Living Korea channel. There are a couple of squirrels here at the entrance of the park. I've seen them several times. They come out every time it gets warmer. Welcome back to another Wednesday video. Today, I'll be reacting to reacting to prejudice foreigners have against Korean women. For some reason, YouTube recommended this video to me in my news feed, in, in my recommended feed. And the video was made, was made a couple of years ago. Um, so I'm not sure why it's relevant. I guess maybe it's relevant because the person who made it is uh, in Korea and clearly the video is made in English. And it's made by Rachel Kim. And she is responding to a video made by Solfa. I will post a link to the video below here. You can watch it there. I realized that the video was posted a couple of years ago. It was either 2018 or 2017 even. But I think the questions that she addresses in the video are still relevant to this day. But I feel like they're not answered clearly enough. Nowhere nearly enough. Uh, sufficiently enough. So I will try to do a slightly better job or or maybe fill in some, some of the blanks that I feel she left out. The first question is, uh, and so these are questions that were posted, I guess, that were directed by foreigners towards Korean women. First question is, do you eat kimchi every day? It's a very stereotypical question anybody could ask any, any you know, person based in any country whose staple food is a particular kind of food. So. Kimchi is uh, Korean, a Korean staple food, so naturally the question will pop up. Do you eat a lot of kimchi? Uh, or do you eat kimchi every day? Which is a little goofy, because it's the same as asking a German, do you eat potatoes every day? Or uh, any European, do you eat bread every day? Or asking an Italian, do you eat spaghetti every day? Or something of that sort. So granted, it's a goofy question. But having said that, Koreans do eat kimchi every day. If you go to a fusion restaurant without any Korean food in it, you're bound to find a fusion restaurant closing down pretty soon. Every fusion restaurant that I've ever been to will have a little uh, buffet or uh, will have kimchi served. There is always small dishes of kimchi that are put on the table because the perception is that if Koreans don't have access to kimchi or smaller side dishes, Korean side dishes, then they're very likely not to come back there. So while some of these women in the video say that they don't eat kimchi every day, I think that they probably do without even realizing it. Kimchi is just such a common food and such an easy, easily accessible food that it's really hard to get away from it. And I don't, honestly, I personally don't see a reason why you should, because it's healthy. It's good. If you're hungry and you're in a pinch, some rice and kimchi to stuff your belly in a healthy way will do the trick. So why not? I think they do eat kimchi every day. The girls say they don't, but I think they do. The second question is, do you really have a kimchi refrigerator in your apartment? I guess this question is meant to evoke a good laugh um, at the expense of I'm not sure who. But yeah, most people do have their, most older people most families do have a kimchi refrigerator in their homes. I would presume that younger people don't simply because they don't know how to cook. <laughs> Unless somebody's married, um, chances are that if a single person is living on their own, they probably spend a lot more time eating outdoors, eating outside in restaurants and not so much at home. And so having a kimchi refrigerator or even a large refrigerator would be kind of useless. And I would imagine that any, any single living person's refrigerator will be half empty. And don't get me wrong, this is no different than it is in Canada. Like if I think about my time in university when I was living on my own, well actually it was different. See in Canada, going outside to eat every single day will kill your budget. There's no way that you could afford to spend $20 or $15 even on, uh, you know, three times a day on a meal. Whereas in Korea, as a single person, you can go out three times a day, have a meal on your own for five or six to seven dollars, and do just fine. So the affordability of restaurants in Korea makes it so that a single person, a university student, can afford to go 
to a restaurant three times a day and not break the bank, whereas in Canada it would be unaffordable. So going back to the question, do you have a kimchi refrigerator in your home? Yes, I would say most families do because they're very convenient and they're slightly different from regular uh, refrigerators and they keep the kimchi fresher and longer. Korea has a day um, on which kimchi is made and when people make it, when families get together to make kimchi, they spend the whole day or even three days making kimchi and they make huge batches. Uh, they make, it'll be like a grandmother and, a, and, and, you know, two or three generations of the family making kimchi together that is then divided amongst the entire family and if you make a lot of kimchi, kimchi will go bad quickly. So the best way to preserve it is in a massive refrigerator, so that's the way to have it, yeah. You should have a kimchi refrigerator if you have a family and if you don't, then get on it and get a kimchi refrigerator in your house. The third question is very girly. Why do all Korean girls wear the same makeup? I'm not sure that this question is posed very accurately because you could say that all women across the world wear the same makeup. Is the makeup produced in the same way? There is mascara, there is eyeshadow, there is uh, whatever cover-up, there is all that jazz and all women wear one or two or three of those at any point in time on their face. I don't know how you put on makeup, I've never done it myself, but you cover up some zits, you spread the foundation, you even it out with some other purpley colors and you make your face or your skin appear as smooth as possible. So that probably would apply to everybody who uses makeup. My wife hardly wears any makeup. So there, that theory goes right out the window. Question number four, why are you obsessed with white skin? And this is a, an interesting question. I've thought about it a long time over the years. And in combination with the answer Rachel Kim provided in her video, kind of made me think about other things. So at the initial glance it might appear like Koreans are racist because there does seem to be the preference for white skin. And so it goes for Thai and I ass and so it goes for Japan. So uh, this preoccupation or fixation on white skin goes pretty much all across the board in, in most of the well, I don't know most, I haven't been to all of them, but in many of the Asian countries. And so it might seem like there is an obsession with, you know, with the Caucasian skin color. When in reality, I think that is very far from the truth. People in Korea, in Thailand and in Japan do like the light colored skin. But not because they have a thing for white people. It's because white skin suggests wealth, or possibly rather dark skin suggests the absence of wealth. You have to look at the history of these countries, okay? Uh, for the most part, Asia, and I guess most of the world, was very rural, agricultural, right? People had to live, people had to work. And you had kings who basically um, dominated and ruled the land, you know, with iron fists or however. But these were the kings and the nobles were the people who who were inside, stayed in the shade, who enjoyed the luxuries of life, while all the other people, the peasants, the farmers, worked in fields, were always exposed to the sun. And naturally, if you're exposed to the sun for prolonged periods of time, your skin goes darker, while the nobility stayed indoors and maintained their skin whiter or lighter. So while the fixation on whiter skin in Asia might seem like it's a race thing, um, I do believe that this is more of a leftover from the times where uh, the economic classes were really segregated. Over time people realized that having darker skin would suggest that you work in a field, that you work outside and therefore uh, are economically less fortunate, I guess. And lighter skin would suggest that you have some kind of noble background. Clearly that doesn't really apply to today's society, but I think for the most part this is where, where this idea or this preference for whiter skin is derived from. How the preference for whiter skin sustains itself to this day is beyond my understanding. Maybe it's metamorphed itself into, you know, into the idea of sun actually being more harmful. Maybe, maybe people in Asia are, are a lot more aware of the dangers that um, excessive exposure to sun causes. You know, Westerners, particularly Europeans, love sunbathing. And I've seen time and time again people just covered in, in moles um, and having, um, you know, the, the fair European skin, like myself, um, 
causes people to burn very easily and, and leave marks. Maybe that's just it. Maybe Asians are a lot more aware of the damage that the sun can cause, while Europeans and Westerners are still ignorant and oblivious to it. Having said that though, there is prejudice in Korea against darker skin. And particularly people of races with darker skin. Um, not so much these days anymore. With the presence of a couple of uh, black dudes who, who have been featured on Korean television, uh, one of them is a, a Korean-born um, man. His father, I believe, was uh, a black gentleman and his mom was Korean. And he's a, he's a Korean kid, born and raised in Korea. He doesn't speak a lot of English. Um, he just looks very different. He's, uh, I've watched uh, his documentary and he had a hard life growing up. Well, I don't know how hard it was, but I'm sure he was picked on a lot. I've experienced similar things from, you know, from my daughter, I heard similar stories and I know from other dads who live in Korea, they've had the same experiences. So, um, a black kid growing up in South Korea, he's about, I guess in his maybe early 20s now, or late 18s. So, um, he was growing up in Korea over the past two decades where Korea was still very backwards in its approach to foreigners, I think. Things are changing now slowly, slowly, but it's still present. Koreans still try to maintain the pure race ideal. Um, and anytime you come across interracial couples, many Koreans will still say that it's not a thing that you should do. Fathers and mothers will disagree with daughters or, or sons wanting to marry outside of the Korean, Korean uh, culture, particularly when it comes to people of darker skin. And I guess if you were going to ask any random Korean whether they would prefer to have babies with a Caucasian or with a person of a darker skin color, my guess is that the majority would answer if they had to choose they would first never get involved with a foreigner and second if they if they had no other choice they would probably go for the Caucasian one because that would render babies that would be of lighter skin and if they were growing up in Korea they would have a uh, a lot less difficulties because there are chances of being picked on by other kids due to their darker skin color. Correct me if I'm wrong but these are the responses that I've received over the years based around those conversations. Question number five was, why are you so judgmental? And the answer was, no, we're not. Well, yes, yes, you are. The fact alone that this video was made uh, and, the title is, and the title is a reaction to the prejudice that foreigners have towards Korean women suggests that you are judging foreigners. You're brushing all foreigners with the same brush. This question was probably taken from like one foreigner or a couple of foreigners that, who may have asked it. But immediately this question is um, thrown at all foreigners and all foreigners see Korean women like that. Clearly that's impossible, clearly. But yet, there it is. Is it judgmental? Absolutely! So yes, Koreans are very judgmental. Here is my perception on it. The judgment comes from the Korean language, from Korean society. When Koreans talk about Korea, they refer to Korea as Urinara, which means our country. They don't talk about my family, they talk about Uri Gajok, which is our family. They don't talk about my father, they talk about Uri Appa, Uri Omma. It's our mom, our dad. If you have two friends talking to each other who have separate, different parents, they will still refer to their parents as Uri Gajok or Uri Appa, Uri Oma. And it's a reference that includes basically all of Korea. So based on the language, on the linguistics of the Korean, Korean language, Koreans do tend to brush the Korean society in one single stroke. English is a very individualistic language. It's my paper, my dad, my family, my car, my this, my that, my... Everything is mine. Whereas in Korea, everything is ours. So when Koreans talk about the rest of the world, my belief is that the linguistic um, dependencies carry over to, the, to those conversations. And so you have the foreigners versus our people who are the Koreans. So it's not necessarily a, a mean thing, a racist thing, but it's definitely a judgmental thing. And it's not necessarily meant in a negative sense, but it does come across as such. It seems like a misunderstanding on, on the part of the, the outsiders, of the foreigners, who perceive, who don't understand 
the Korean language, uh, how the Korean culture functions, is not how all racism starts due to a lack of understanding and ignorance. Pretty much. Now, don't get me wrong. There, there is some racism in here uh, in Korea. I've seen it. I've also seen it in Japan, and I'm sure there is some in in Thailand. But for the most part, I think people are pretty understanding and a lot more accommodating than they were in the past. And things are getting better and better with time. The last question asked was, do you have any plastic surgery done? And this is always a touchy question. Rachel Kim's answer was, who cares? And my response is, well, if who cares, then why do it? If who cares, then why hide it? Think about that. If you don't care whether you have plastic surgery or not, then why do it to begin with? You do it because you do care about your looks. You do care how people perceive you as a person and you do care to have that double eyelid which many, many Korean women get. Girls in uh, middle schools or high schools who are not yet allowed to undergo plastic surgery will spend hours and hours brushing their eyes up with, with special I don't know, brushes or even just pushing, playing around by pushing their, their fingers up into their eyes or there are special glue sticks that you can, stickers that you can place on your eyes, eyelid that will pull the eyelid up and kind of start forming it and people believe that over time if you do it long enough um, the eye will form itself into a double eyelid. So this is the basic one that most Korean women as well as Korean men do. There, you know, there's different kinds of faces all over the world and, and even in Korea there are different kinds of faces and different kinds of eyes. Not every Korean looks the same, clearly. Um, and some Korean eyes are very Asian. Some are big, some are small, and some, have, some people have double eyelids. Not all Koreans have double, eye, double eyelids, but some do. And those who do are perceived uh, to be more handsome looking or prettier. And uh, yeah, this uh, a double eyelid is basically like the most commonly applied plastic surgery that almost, I would say, 90% of women uh, use. In addition to that, there is Botox. Women shoot Botox into their cheeks to make themselves look younger, into their foreheads to make their foreheads look a little bit rounder, uh, because the Asian uh, physique kind of uh, oftentimes renders foreheads that may appear flat. And so a lot of women will get Botox shot into their foreheads to make their foreheads look a little bit rounder. Um, how many people do that? I don't know. But I would say that the double eyelid is the most commonly applied ones. I think third one in line are nose bridges. Um, same reason. A lot of people, uh, the Asian features uh, render a nose that is a lot smaller. It's a lot flatter here at the, at the top. So a lot of Koreans will get a larger nose bridge. Is that good? Is that bad? I don't know, but people do. And the fact that you have to hide that fact that you got plastic surgery should tell you something about how you feel about it. So to answer the question of who cares, the person who does it cares. Obviously cares enough to do it. I personally fear that this is cheating. It's cheating men, anybody, well man, it's che anybody who gets into a relationship without understanding what's being, what they're getting into. If you're a man or a woman, and you find a person attractive based on their looks and then later after you get married and you have babies you find out that your babies look nothing like the other parent you might feel slightly cheated <laughs> uh. anyway that's my five cents for this little thing i'm gonna post uh, a link to the video below this video and you can have a look at Rachel Kim's video who talks about the Solfa video. Enjoy the comparison and I hope to see you in the next one. Remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment in the section below, let me know what you think. Enjoy the beautiful day. I'll see you on Friday.